Hey guys, welcome back to the kitchen. Today we have an absolutely gorgeous crispy chicken bun recipe. This is my Japanese style karage chicken bun with iceberg lettuce, a little bit of mayo and a togarashi salt. It's so tasty. And we're gonna serve it alongside some crispy potatoes with some teriyaki mayo. This is an absolute winner. It's a great treat weekend meal. And to start it off, we're gonna crack on with the marinade for the chicken. And for that, we need a combination of some great Asian store corporate ingredients. Firstly, some soy sauce. I always have a big bottle of this in the kitchen. So straight into the bowl, you're going for a hefty amount. A few tablespoons go in here. We're gonna get a lovely nutty flavor from a couple of teaspoons of some sesame oil. One of my favorite ingredients, and it is phenomenal if you get some good quality sesame oil. It's really pungent and nutty and gorgeous. And to this, we're gonna add a good splash of sake. If you can't get your hands on this, you could replace with a Chinese rice wine, or maybe even add a push of rice wine vinegar, but you're not gonna get that authentic taste that you get with sake. So sake, sesame oil, and soy sauce go in, and then just to bring it together, a good pinch of sugar. This will go a long way to balance the flavor in here, so don't skimp on the sugar. It's just a, a generous pinch that goes in here. Now, we have our sort of store cupboard ingredients added in now. It's time for the aromatics, and they come in the form of ginger and garlic. So all I wanna do with these are to give them a nice fine mince on a microplane grater. This is probably one of my most used kitchen tools, and for good reason, because it can be used for so many different things. Lemon zest, orange zest, ginger, garlic, chili, there's a whole host of things that it just transforms into a nice little fine pulp that adds loads of great flavor to so many different recipes. So highly recommend you use one of these in your kitchen. So two big fat garlic cloves go in here. You want it kind of honking and stinking of garlic. That's what I'm going for here. And ginger is a really key ingredient here. Uh, I've just peeled it and I'm using a fairly hefty amount. Always in recipes, people kind of say a thumb-sized piece of ginger. I always say a thumb-sized piece of ginger in my recipes. But I have to say, a good hunk of ginger, finely grated like this, is gonna make the world a difference. So, a nice fine grating of this, and you should be left with a beautiful pulp that will wrap its way around the chicken. And when this gets deep fried, you are in for a totally delicious bite. So, give that a last tap and get all your ginger and garlic in there. And now it's time to get our chicken in here and get it marinating. So I've got chicken thighs here. They're boneless and they're skinless and they're gonna fry off beautifully. So four chicken thighs go straight into this marinade. And like I said, if you have the time, leave it overnight. But even half an hour in this lovely concoction will do a lot in terms of adding flavor to the chicken. So give that a good toss through the marinade and the smell as soon as you start mixing is just so aromatic and gorgeous. It's the ginger, the garlic and all those store covered ingredients. Leave it to marinate as long as you can and while that's happening, we're gonna get on with our potatoes. Now, I don't know about Japanese chicken and potatoes but in my world they work quite well and there was a great little restaurant we used to go to when we lived in Los Angeles called Pikuniku in um, Ro in downtown LA and they used to serve their fried Japanese style chicken with potatoes, crispy with togarashi salt and they were absolutely gorgeous. So this is kind of somewhat inspired by, by that place. So I'm gonna take our potatoes, we're gonna get them sliced up into nice kind of hefty chunks, straight down the middle. And I love the idea that you get these really nice chunky pieces of crispy potato to enjoy alongside your crispy chicken bun. It's not a bad place to be when it comes to dinner time. So just a nice slice down the center. I'm gonna get our potatoes onto the tray. We have a combination of soy and melted butter that's gonna to be tossed over here and a little bit of salt as well. So into our bowl of melted butter, I'm gonna add a splash of soy sauce and a fairly hefty seasoning of salt as well. And then we're gonna give this a good mix up. So that's our soy butter mix. Literally goes straight over our potatoes and we're gonna get that completely tossed and then straight into the oven. There's something lovely about that combination of soy and butter. It's a little combo that I've just have become obsessed with. It's so good and over potatoes gone crispy in the oven. It's absolutely gorgeous. Right, that's our potatoes nicely coated. Let's get them into the oven. Okay, 
that is our potatoes in the oven. The next thing we need to create is a teriyaki mayo. Now, the beauty of this is just how easy it is. It's literally two standard kitchen ingredients. You've got some mayo and you've got some teriyaki sauce and we're just gonna combine them in a bowl. This is basically going to create the dipping sauce for our potatoes, but it's also gonna be the thing that we fill our beautiful chicken buns with. So mayo straight into a bowl. You want a couple of tablespoons here. And then to this, a good glug of teriyaki. Give it a little mix up. I love the fact that a lot of these ingredients are stuff that I would always have in the kitchen and you're just bringing them together to make a little marriage made in heaven. I love the saltiness in with the creaminess of the mayo and then this is gonna go wonderfully with our potatoes and that chicken bun. So you're getting two for the price of one. Now, with our chicken, we're gonna get it on frying. Like I said, if you have the time, marinate it for longer, but we're going to use corn flour to give us that crispy coating on the chicken. So a good generous amount of corn flour goes into a bowl. Just season that quite generously with a bit of salt. Give it a good mix up. Okay, we have our corn flour nicely seasoned up. We have our oil coming up to temperature. It's at about 170 degrees Celsius. That's about 330 degrees Fahrenheit. I have my chicken in the marinade. We have our corn flour next to the pan. And the beauty of this is all we're gonna use is a tongs to dip straight from the marinade into that corn flour mix and then straight into that hot oil. And it really is important that the oil is hot because as soon as you add anything into it, it actually drops in temperature. So you need to keep your eye on it as you are regulating, particularly if you're using a pot like this rather than like a deep fat fryer. So once that chicken is nicely coated like this, it's got all those little craggy bits nicely coated in the corn flour, get it straight into that hot oil and it should puff up, go beautifully golden. And that's exactly what we need to do with the rest of them. Okay, just have a look at this. Our chicken has had the time in that deep fat fryer. It's gone really rich, golden and crispy. And now I'm just gonna transfer it out onto a plate lined with some kitchen paper. And we are in crispy chicken heaven. This is always my favorite bit of making a crispy chicken bun is knowing that you have hot, crispy chicken ready to rock. Now to finish this off, I always like to sprinkle anything that comes out of a fryer with a little bit of salt and because we want a little bit of spice in there, I'm gonna add some Japanese togarashi. This is a fantastic little seasoning that's gonna add a bit of spice. So straight over the chicken with that, all the way over, and like I said, plenty of salt as well. And you wanna just turn those over and make sure that every last bit is nicely coated. What I love about using potato flour, or you could use corn flour here, on the chicken is that you get this sort of like light crispy crunch that's really particular to that Japanese style fried chicken. So once you have that nicely seasoned, you essentially have crispy chicken that is just begging to be put in a bun. So that's exactly what we're gonna do now. I'm using some brioche baps. Now, if you get your hands on these, you don't need to toast them. I like the pillowy nature of them untoasted. So we're gonna spread each side of this with our beautiful teriyaki mayo. So a little dollop here. A little dollop here. On the base one, we're gonna add some crispy, crunchy iceberg lettuce. So once you have your iceberg on, a little bit of that crispy chicken on top. And for me, there really shouldn't be any more fuss than that. It should be pillowy, beautiful brioche, crispy chicken, and a little bit of crunch and that beautiful bite from the mayo. Pop it on, give it a slice in half, and just take a look at that. Hot chicken, brioche, and a little bit of that iceberg lettuce. I'm sorry, but I'm just gonna have to try it now. Oh, oh man. That is just so good. There's a crispiness that you just won't get with regular fried chicken. That Japanese use of corn flour or potato flour gives you this really intense crunch. And the marinating that you've done to the chicken beforehand is just so worthwhile because you get that little run of ginger and garlic through the soy sauce, the sake, the sesame oil. It goes to creating really flavorful chicken and then just served in a nice pillowy bun. That is totally delicious. And the last thing to serve it up with is our beautiful potatoes. Okay, potatoes out of the oven. We've got chicken bun action. I'm gonna dip one of my beautiful potatoes in that beautiful mayo. 
Uh, mm. Mm, mm, mm. Another bite of the chicken bun. Mm. Still crunchy, still gorgeous. This is a total winner. A bit of a different chicken bun, really tasty and well worth giving a go. If you want the full recipe, as always, it's in the box below. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and ring the bell for notifications when delicious recipe videos like this land. And of course, leave me a comment letting me know if you're gonna give this chicken bun a go. Until then, I'm off to eat the rest of this, so I'll see you soon.